On today's episode of the CLS Experience, we have a very exclusive treat. She's a poet, a best-selling author, speaker, activist, and an educator. No big deal. She was born in Lebanon, but arrived in Canada at the age of 16 and felt unstable and adrift in an unfamiliar place. She completed her education and went on to become a high school teacher, where she spoke at multiple schools about poetry, diversity, inclusion, education, quality, culture, and more. She then went on to get her master's in education and doctorate in educational leadership, where she taught her first group of people, a group of refugees who led her back to her original passion, writing. And she began to heal her 16-year-old self by writing to heal her students. She self-published her first collection of poetry in 2016 and has since become an inspiration to millions of people worldwide and a trailblazing voice for women everywhere. Drawing on her own experiences of displacement, discrimination, and abuse, her ability to use her words to encourage others to build a home within themselves is second to none. She's just a juggernaut in all facets of life and a terrific human being. Please welcome the persistent, resilient, and wise, the beautiful, brilliant, and soulful Nejwa Zabian. How you doing, Nejwa? Great. And you pronounced my name perfectly. <laughs> First of all, I, I take great pride. I, I saw it, it was a little bit of a tricky spelling, so, so I wanted to make sure. Do most people not pronounce it right? Many people just butcher it, but you just said it perfectly. So thank you for that. I'm impressed. <laughs> my pleasure. You know what it is? It looks like um, it, it should be with it, pronounced with an A, but it's really it sounds like an E. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the beauty of language and letters and coming from a different place, having a name that's in a different language, but you know, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited for this conversation. We probably could have chatted for a couple hours before we hit record. We're having a really deep conversation. Yes. We should probably <laughs> see some of the stuff. For our audience and listeners, in case you're not familiar with Nejwa, my biggest suggestion is to do a total deep dive. Check out all her awesome content, her books, Instagram, all the stuff that she has going on. Play catch up. What I think is most valuable today is we just have an unbelievable and juicy conversation. Before we dive in, we're going to get a little weird. You ready for me, Nejwa? I'm ready. What is your superpower? My superpower is my unwavering ability to be authentic when I put my mind to it interesting it, mm -hmm. because you added when you put your mind to it mm -hmm. so does that mean that being authentic takes awareness and maybe it's a bit challenging absolutely especially when your authenticity comes at odds with your welcome in other people's lives you're very likely to shut that authenticity off whether it's a conscious decision that you make or an unconscious one based on how you survived when you were younger or in your past you might very well decide on some level that I'm not going to be authentic right now because that's going to jeopardize my connection or what I think is a connection with these people around me. So for me, when I'm aware enough to say, it is more important for me to be in environments where I don't have to fight for others to see my worth when I'm my authentic self or for others to see me as worthy of their welcome, then I'm able to feel that inner power to say, I'm just going to be my authentic self and your choice to welcome me is not going to affect how I operate in the world or what I allow to project from within me. So I wanted to make that clarification at the end when I said when I want to because many times or when I put my mind to it many times we really do want that but we feel like we're not empowered enough we feel like we could literally die if a certain person walks away from our lives because of who we are or we could literally die if we lose that attachment and so even though we might really want to be our authentic selves and to be loved and welcomed for that self of ours, we end up saying, well, I'll just give a little tiny part of who I am and the rest I'll just shut off because at least I can keep this attachment. This is really crazy right now. I have like a dopamine hit, like I'm high, <laughs> I swear. 
Because <laughs> I, I just love you and we just met. And we can have a, a full conversation just on this. And one of my favorite topics to talk about and really unpack right now is authenticity. And you're going to love this. It's so interesting. For so long, for 35 years to be exact, I would show up in the world as what I thought I wanted the world to see me as or, or what I thought they wanted. And as a result, I found myself really down, anxious mm. about the future, depressed about the past, anything but present and out of alignment. And when I when I was explaining to you before we went on air, when I reinvented myself, there was no guarantee because you know I had no following, no connections, nothing. But the one guarantee that I made to myself was that no matter what happens for the first time in my life ever, um, no more people pleasing, I'm going to show up as the real, raw, organic, authentic version of Craig. And, and if I fail, which I didn't think I would because I'm determined and resourceful creative, at least I would fail being myself. And ironically, when I did that, which you could argue is maybe one of the toughest things you can do, that's when the world began to see me. Yes, because really before, maybe the world saw you, but they were seeing the image that you were projecting, not who you really are. So you didn't feel seen because mm -hmm. who you are is hiding inside, right? Right. So you could, That's why so many people talk about like people that they admire and they're like, you know, everybody looks up to this person and that person could be surrounded by so many people who see them and love them and treat them like they're incredible, but that person could feel lonely because the image that they are projecting into the world is very fabricated and not including who they really are. So I understand what you're saying is people were seeing you, but you weren't feeling seen. And so what's the point if you're not feeling seen? Right. No, it's not enough to have people admire us. It's not enough to have people around us. It's not enough to have people who are willing to support us on our journey if it's not truly us that they are seeing and supporting. Yeah, and I love it. And I want to say this, like for the listeners and the audience today, it's true that when you have the courage to step in and really show up as your authentic self, that you're not going to be for everybody. But as I like to say, like, you shouldn't even want to be. And mm -hmm. life will kind of, life will become this like true authentic filter and it will filter out the people that aren't really supposed to be around you. And it'll help the right people gravitate towards the actual real version of you. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. I mean, when you are truly yourself, with the world around you there's something that is so attractive about that and I'm not just talking about oh I'm attracted to you no like even random strangers will be attracted to your ability to just be yourself and not care about the opinions of other people there's a certain level of freedom that comes across and every person out there wants to be free every person out there wants to have that you know, feeling of I could just be myself and I'm indifferent to the opinions that people have about me, whether they're beautiful opinions or ugly opinions. I just want to be myself. There's something so attractive and appealing about that because every person out there is like, I wish I had that. And so people are naturally attracted to you being truly yourself. And those who look at you and say, Oh, I, I don't I don't like that. I don't like how this person could not be filtered. I don't like how this person could not be proper, whatever that means. Like different people from different backgrounds and cultures and religions might not like that based on their beliefs. And if your focus when you are being authentic is to just be authentic, you're not even going to be aware of other people's opinions and when they do come to you your your focus isn't on them it's on you so you respectfully say well okay that's your opinion of me fine i'm not your person go find your people but you will have so many people around you who will want to stay around you and that's what you you know that's one of the byproducts of just being yourself so for anybody listening it is scary 
to think of the number of people that you're going to lose once you decide to embrace your authenticity. But at the same level of that fear, if not more, is this beautiful, definite truth that so many more people from those that walked away will walk into your life and will not put you in a position where you have to prove to them or you have to change parts of yourself to prove to them that you have earned a place in their life. The people who will walk into your life will not be looking for you to be any way other than who you are. And when you make mistakes, they're not going to sit there and judge you for them and say, you let me down or you disappointed me because they see you as a separate person going on your journey. They will sit with you and support you through it. Their love for you is not conditional. Their love for you is one that helps you grow into you know, a person who is as close to yourself as you can be. Where do I begin? <laughs> you said the way you were describing authenticity being the most attractive i couldn't agree more and where it comes to mind is like sexy like a trap mm -hmm. sex someone that's just so comfortable in their own skin like yeah. you know, it really is the most attractive thing and and, and also think about how sorry when you see oh, go ahead, something go ahead. Like that it it's so much more than what they look like like 100 percent you just you all of a sudden feel like you are seeing a whole being in front of you you're not just seeing a face you're not just seeing a body you're not seeing an image there's something so like entrapping in a person like that where you feel like you're in a whole new world entrapping is that what you just said mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I love that. That's <laughs> I'm adding that to my vocabulary. <laughs> but I couldn't agree more. Like attraction um, and authenticity and confidence. Mm -hmm. I don't even see like physicality. Like I just, that's like what I'm, I feel like I'm in the matrix. I'm seeing codes. Like that's what's so sexy to me. And, and I couldn't agree more. And the good news is, is for everybody listening is this is essentially available to everybody if you can be brave enough to lean into it, but it's not mm -hmm. easy. Yes. Yeah. It's not easy. No, it's, it's, it's not. But I think sometimes we mistake um, difficulty with being a sign that we need to go back to what makes us comfortable. We need to go back to what's easy. But if you really think about it is being inauthentic or is feeling like you have to hide parts of yourself is that easy or is it a miserable existence it's but not easy it's familiar maybe it's comfortable work. because of the familiarity yeah exactly it is a lot of work so be, but because we don't like the discomfort of something new like think of going from being a people pleaser to somebody who just does, me too, <laughs> to somebody who just does what they want to do and doesn't worry about, you know, their goal isn't to please somebody else. They're thinking of what, what am I comfortable with? What do I want to do? That's very uncomfortable to like, especially think of a person who you've tried to please your entire life. It could be a parent, for example. And then all of a sudden, you are willing to say, no, I don't want to come to that dinner or I don't want to see that relative to that parent that you've been trying to please your whole life. That's hard. That's not easy. So a big part of moving towards our authentic selves is accepting that it will be difficult. It will be uncomfortable, but it's not going to be that way forever. Any kind of change is uncomfortable. And I know this is a cliche example, but if you've never gone to the gym before and all of a sudden you go, the first week or two, you're going to be sore. It's part of the journey to get to a place where, okay, now it's become comfortable. It was uncomfortable for a little bit and now it's better. So it, it's like in that moment where your body's telling you, don't do this. It's scary where, you know, my knees are shaking. I can't say no to just override that and tell yourself I trust that I will be okay doing this once you show yourself what it feels like to do that then you want to do it more 
it's 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 addicting to a certain extent to like show yourself that you could do the things you never thought you could do yeah these are the best types of conversations right like <laughs> topics of course i have a list of things that i wanted to hit but like straight off the cuff like we're just going and flowing these are the best these are the most meaningful and every worthy transformation requires a worthy opponent something to <laughs> overcome that that bit of uncomfortableness in the beginning like going through the birth canal like pain is the portal and then in the over the other side you find it so liberating and i think back like i must have been working so hard to show up as something i'm not to to be this person that i thought i was supposed to be in front of different people or situations whereas mm -hmm. now i'm not afraid to look silly i, I mean i don't give a shit like I, I give a shit but like i'm not worried about if someone doesn't like me for me because then i'm not their flavor and they're probably not mine and that's okay and, and when you see get in the rhythm with that it is free and liberty and much easier to show up because you don't have to play pretend you just be you right absolutely and again you just it's not just that you no longer care about people liking you. You don't care about people disliking you. So like there's there's an element of I'm not trying to show myself in any way to others based on what I think they want to see or based on what I think they don't want to see. Because that's not my focus. My focus is myself and understanding that I'm only living one life. So why don't I just live that life myself as opposed to based on other people's likes or dislikes because this is my path like they're not going to they will affect that path of mine of course but their opinions aren't going to change who I am as a person or where I'm headed or what my abilities are it my opinions of myself affect me more right 100%. There's such mm -hmm. power in this stuff. And, and something that I recently started doing is if somebody that I like, well, I like most people, that's why I'm around them. But if someone like rubbed me the wrong way or pissed me off, instead of like not mentioning it and building up a little bit of subconscious resentment towards them, what I'll do now is I'll take a moment. I won't react, but I'll, I'll respond. Maybe I'll shoot them a text and just say, hey, just speaking from the heart something that you did earlier, something that you said rubbed me the wrong way, and here's why. And what I noticed is since I started doing that, like it really has strengthened those relationships because the right people will respect that you're being authentic, you're speaking from the heart, and you're telling them how you feel as opposed to like bottling that stuff up. So now I have the mindset that if I feel some type of way and I don't let them or I don't speak about it, now I'm being inauthentic. It, it's a totally different paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. And, and think about it, the people in your life who never, ever, 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 ever get upset with anything that you do or never have a comment about something or never tell you, you know, I'm telling you this out of love, but I think this decision that you're making isn't the right one for you, then those people aren't being authentic with you. They are not being themselves and they don't have your best interest in mind because we're all human. We're all imperfect. We're all going to make mistakes. And if if I, and I used to be this way, if I don't give those around me feedback and don't tell them how I feel and don't tell them what my opinions are, then that means the relationship I have with them is very imbalanced where they hold all the power in this relationship because they can just do what they want and say what they want and feel what they want. And even though I might have certain needs that aren't being met, I'm I'm really just saying, I don't care, do whatever you want, as long as you don't leave my life, as long as you stay in my life. And so that reflects something about me. Not saying it reflects a weakness or an insecurity or whatever. It obviously reflects that I need to do a lot of work to get to a point where I am comfortable being myself, including saying, you know, that thing you did yesterday made me feel like I wasn't important to you. Or that decision that you made without talking to me about it made me feel like you don't care about my opinion of, 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 you know, what I think we should do together, 
or in a friendship or in a business partnership or whatever it is, then that means that I know who I am and I know my value and I'm not willing to sacrifice that just to continue having this connection with you. So again, there is something very appealing, very attractive about a person being able to put themselves above the importance of being welcomed in other people's lives. There's something about that that you can't replace. This is the most profound, gripping, and intoxicating conversation I've ever had <laughs> in regards to authenticity. We might as well hyper-focus on this. Yes. This is believable. And, and something that you said earlier, and I think this would be a good segue, is you mentioned when you're being authentic, like maybe to like a family member or a relative saying, you know, I don't want to go to that event or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And that's something that I've been doing a lot of recently. And people aren't really used to me saying no often. But also, like, I don't feel the need to explain myself. And also, I'm not going to make an excuse, right? If I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, I, I might just keep it vague and be like, I can't attend or I, mm -hmm. I won't be attending, you know? Um, but I got to tell you, like, when when you do stuff that you really, like, you don't feel like it's an alignment or, or you really don't want to go or there's people there that might trigger you or bring down your, whatever the case may be, you end up coming out of that encounter typically depleted or feeling some type of way. So, so really it's so important to boundary standards, whichever word you feel more comfortable with, but you got to set those. And also when you do that, you're staying even more true and authentic to yourself. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, if you start going to stuff, that's not really a hell yes then you're kind of being inauthentic with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And you're telling your body, I know that you don't want to be here, but I'm telling you that other people's disappointment is more scary than you not living your life the way you want to live your life. Like that's the message you're sending to your body. You're telling it, I know that you're telling me you don't want to be here, but I'm going to override what you're telling me. And I'm going to try to trust someone else's judgment of me over my own judgment of me. So you teach yourself that it's okay to abandon yourself because the purpose is you're not upsetting someone else outside of you. But think about it. If somebody really loved you and had your best interest in mind, would they want you to be in an environment where you don't want to be? No, they wouldn't. So these aren't even the right people for you, for you to be worried about what they think of you. And for many of us, like we have a hard time understanding this entire dynamic. All we say is, I can't say no. Okay, well, why? Ask yourself why. And are the people who you're afraid to lose, people who truly have your best interest in mind and see you for who you are and love you for who you are because if they were you saying no won't be taken as a sign for them to end their relationship with you or to be so disappointed in you or to be so hard on you your no will just be like okay well I will see you next time and I hope you're doing well so once you're able to think it all the way through it changes your perspective and you start giving yourself permission to say the no, say the yes, say the maybe next time, say the the short sentence you need to say without having a huge explanation or without having to lie and say, but you know, the first few times while you're learning to set boundaries, you find yourself having to lie. I say, it's better to, to lie about why you're not going to, to an event than to force yourself to go to it and end up resenting yourself and resenting all these people who you think made you go, it's fine. Do it if you need to, to protect your mental health. But don't make it a habit and always rely on it. Like do it with the intention of I'm working towards being a person who doesn't put myself in environments feeling like I'm forced to be here. I'm working towards being a person who trusts myself and trusts my judgment and worries more about how I'm feeling, how my body's feeling, how my 
soul is feeling than how others feel about the decisions I make for myself. Is there anyone that gets a hall pass or like under no circumstance are you not going to attend if they asked you? So for example, like my brother, my best friend or, or my parents, you know, even though sometimes I may not want to do something, I, it's challenging to say no to that. Everyone else, I, I have no problem leaning into how I really feel. Yeah, I don't think you break your rules for yourself for anyone, including your family. Because at the end of the day, what you're saying is, I care more about how they feel about my decisions than I feel about my decisions. So if there's something that you don't want to go to or something that you don't enjoy, even if it's with one of those people that you're like, I find it really hard to say no, then ask yourself, why is it that I find it hard to say no? Is it because I genuinely love them and want to spend as much time as possible with them? Then maybe what you could say is, you know, I won't come to this, but I'll meet you after we can do this thing or that thing. Let's spend some time together. Or is the reason that you're feeling like you can't say no, the uh, guilt that you feel internally, like this is a family member, I have to do this. And Anytime you experience guilt, and this was a very, very hard lesson that I had to learn, which is beautiful, and it's changed my life. When you are experiencing guilt, ask yourself, am I feeling guilty because I'm doing something wrong? Or am I feeling guilty because I'm being made to feel like I did something wrong? So am I doing something wrong? If the answer is no, then you say this guilt is not mine to carry. I'll give it back to you. But if I am doing something wrong, then okay, apologize or whatever. But if it's a, let's say it's a dinner, the family dinner, and you're feeling like you don't want to go, maybe you have something else to do, or you just need to rest, or maybe there's a family member that you don't like being around because they don't make you feel good, they shame you or whatever. So ask yourself, am I doing something wrong by not going to this? No, you're not. So I'm not going to feel guilty. I'm going to give this guilt back to you. And so doing that has honestly transformed my life because, again, a lot of the times we don't know how to discern what it is that we're feeling. We just don't want to feel that uncomfortable feeling. So we'll just move forward, but we're moving forward towards something that will make us even more uncomfortable. I received that and that was beautiful. And to be honest with you, that was very helpful for me, <laughs> which I imagine it's going to be helpful for, for millions others. Um, yeah. Even just asking yourself that question, very powerful. Um, am I doing something wrong or am I being made to feel like I'm doing something wrong? Yeah. This is so good. It's interesting. And then I want to ask you about your newest book, Welcome Home. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that I was able to be brave enough and to have the courage to step into what I'm doing now and, and all that stuff and be authentic was because I did two things. I forgave myself for not being where I'd hoped I'd be at that point. And I started to love myself, truly. Even the not so pretty stuff, the stuff that you don't even want to tell your therapist, like all the stuff. And, and I just owned it and realized by no means am I perfect, but really what matters is what we do next, right? And once I forgave myself and began to love myself, it was like I was set free from like, yes. I, I picture like being on Wall Street, like walking to the office with a, with a three-piece suit, but there was like a bus attached to my jacket. And finally, like I just snipped it and it was like, okay, I forgave myself. And also I began to love myself and accept myself. Doesn't mean I have to like, you know, love every part of it, but but I accepted it. And from there, I was really able to, to move forward and step into who I am and so forth. Are those two things really important for you? Absolutely. Self-forgiveness and self-love are, they are so essential to you seeing yourself as a whole person, to you seeing yourself as the leader of your life to you seeing yourself as a priority in your life because if you don't learn how to love yourself 
And most of us don't know how to love ourselves because based on our conditioning, based on the way that we were raised, based on the majority of the relationships that we had, we were probably taught to put everybody else ahead of us, that that's some kind of a sign of honor, of nobility to be able to put everybody else ahead of us. Everybody teaches you that, that, you know, being self-sacrificial means something great about you. So to learn to love yourself, this is what really shifted my thinking on self-love. I had to put it in terms where I could really visualize it. And I asked myself, like, who are the most important people in my life? You know, I could list them, the people I love the most that I would do anything for, that I would be there for, that I would give them the compassion they need, the support they need. And I asked myself, where am I on that list? And I wasn't anywhere on that list. And I told myself, as a person who wants to live authentically, it is my job to put myself at the top of that list. Because if I don't do it, no one will. And if I don't do it, then that means I don't think that I deserve the love that I give others. But I know that I deserve the love that I give others. So when you see it in that way, it could be a wake-up call for you. Same thing with forgiveness. Forgiveness, when it's not present in your life, it could chain you to your past for a very long time. There mm -hmm. are people who hold grudges towards others or towards themselves. There are people who resent others and themselves. There are people who live in the, oh, I should have done this. I could have done this, but I didn't. And Forgiveness is not about saying that all of that was okay. Forgiveness is about radically accepting that what happened, happened. It is not going to change. You did the best you could do because if there was better that you could do at the time, you would have done it. But maybe you didn't feel strong enough to do it and that's okay. That past version of you needs you to go back, sit with them without judgment, without shame and say, I understand how hard this is for you. Right now, what you think is that this is the best that you could do. I understand that. You're afraid of this. You are worried that this might happen if you make a different choice. I get it. And I accept you. And I forgive you. When you do that, you are releasing the anger, the judgment, the resentment that you have towards the past version of you. And at the same time, you are recognizing that that past version of you is part of you because many of us what we want to do is push push it away and say that wasn't me you're neglecting a part of yourself that is part of you whether you like it or not and so that's that wholeness that you feel with yourself by not rejecting certain parts of you so self-love and self-forgiveness are so important for you to let go of everything that you thought about yourself and to embrace who you fully and authentically are. And by the way, my next book, which is coming out in three weeks, it's an audio original and it's called Conversations on Letting Go. And it also talks about self-forgiveness and self-love and learning how to really walk towards yourself, let go of everything that is holding you back from being your full authentic self. This is awesome. I was literally in my community call today and my membership. <laughs> I was talking about the power of surrendering and letting go. And what do you need to surrender and let go of mm -hmm. so that you can open up space for yes. and become available, and be a match mm -hmm. for all the stuff that's out there for you. And many times we can't see it because we're still holding on. And you didn't make space for it. Yeah, it. It. absolutely. It's it's like the simplest example is when you have a freezer full of food, there is no more space for anything. Well, there's nothing more you can put in there. But once you take out all the stuff that's old, that's expired, that you don't need, now you've made space for more stuff that you can put in there. It's the same thing with anything in our lives. If you're in a very bad relationship, you're not making space for a new one by staying in it. And that comes with no judgment. But you just have to see that it is possible and that a step in reaching that point is making space for it.
this is great. And a, a lot of times, <laughs> like, I attract a lot of people that like want to leave their nine to five or corporate and become an entrepreneur and stuff like that. And oftentimes it's like, but I, I'm making this and, and I need to kind of keep it afloat before I get this up and running. And I want to be responsible because everybody has a different situation. But I know deep down, if you really want to be available for all this, you have to create the, the space for it. And that might mean letting go of that, even if it's just a short-term season. So you could really step into it. And that's just one example. But the relationship mm -hmm. one too, I mean, that's something I could totally relate to myself. Yes, there you go. And, you know, for the people who have a hard time letting go of a job, just because that is how they support themselves financially, maybe they have a family, maybe they really need that income until they're at a point where they're comfortable, just repurpose that job that you have as this is the way that I make money to support this dream until I get to that point. You know, that's what I did. You know, I was I was a teacher. And when I started writing, I just felt like I still needed that stability. But I, I had to shift where my energy was going most when I was able to repurpose the intention for that job that I had as you know, I'm in it because I enjoy teaching. I want to help youngsters with mental health. I want to help them see who they are. And once I was able to tie it into the mission that I had with my writing, it became so much easier until I got to a point where I was more confident, not relying on it at all. So you could use it as a transition if you really must, but don't let most of your energy go in that direction let your energy move in the opposite direction towards whatever it is that you do want and little by little the significance of that thing that job will lessen in your life exactly that was beautiful so basically change the meaning you give that yeah and for some people they don't even need that job that they are at right now they could get one that is literally just you walk into work, you do what you have to do and you leave home and work doesn't come home with you. And you could just say, well, that's the way that I keep my family afloat. And the rest of my time is going to be towards this other dream of mine. You could do that. There's, you could do that. Just make sure that you're not putting all of your attention and energy on the job that you are trying to leave. Yeah. Love it. So your new book is in Audible only? It's on, it's not, it won't just be Audible. I believe it'll be on all audio platforms, which most of us listen to Audible, but yeah. it is an audio original. So it won't be in paperback. It's just me speaking. Um, and it, it is, it is structured, but it is very much um, like I'm having a conversation with you. Like you will feel as you're listening to it, that I'm not narrating a book because most of it was unscripted. It was just me in the studio speaking. So you'll feel like we're having a heart to heart conversation. And it's the first time I've ever done something like this. And I enjoyed it so much. And I just know that any person who listens to it is going to get so much out of it because I put, you know, I was going to say both, but there's more than two things I put, you know, um, talking about letting go and what it means and why it's so difficult and there's strategies there's activities there's affirmations there's guided meditations that will help you with it there's questions that people submitted about letting go like letting go of toxic relationships letting go of um, internal perceptions external perceptions letting go of infidelity I put them under five different themes and answered real people's questions and offered all the guidance and strategies that I had. And so I would say it's the most vulnerable I've been in my entire life, because when I write a book, you know, I write the entire manuscript and I hand it in Same. and I can go over that manuscript many times and say, oh, I'm too vulnerable here. Maybe I'll change it in some way. And maybe I've changed the way I feel about this. But this one, I went into the studio and recorded. And I told myself, just be as vulnerable as you would be in a conversation with somebody who you really trust. So it is just, it's its beautiful. I, I can't wait for you to listen to it. <laughs> it's so unique. I, I love your process for that. And we're going to drop that in the show notes, of course. 
And, and when you started talking about it, I mean, you were lit up. I could, talk, <laughs> I, I imagine all the, the poetry in the books are your babies. We just thought mm-hmm. about it, so I know the feeling. But this one is a little bit different um, and, and unscripted, so to speak. And I think that's really beautiful. And, and I can't wait for it. Yay. When did you write Welcome Home? I wrote Welcome Home in 2020. And, um, but the the idea for it came to me right after I published my first book in 2016. I had given a TED Talk on finding home through poetry. And it was in London, UK. And um, at, that day after I went back to my hotel room, this this image of building a home within came to me. And I was like, but how do I teach someone how to build a home within? Like, how do I actually put it into a book? And so I started visualizing a home with a room for self-love and a room for forgiveness and a room for compassion and clarity and surrender on a foundation of self-acceptance and self-awareness. I started visualizing the entire thing. And all I could come up with that day, I opened a document on my laptop and I was like, the title is Welcome Home because you will be able to tell yourself, welcome home. So that's what we all want after traveling and you know, getting to the airport. All you want is for you to get home and to feel like you could just you know, be yourself and have a nice cooked meal and, and just feel like you could just be yourself and not have to worry about anything. And so how beautiful would it be to give that to yourself and tell yourself, welcome home. So it stayed on my laptop for about four years. And then when I met my new agents, we were talking about publishing a book on letting go. And I flew to New York and I met with all these publishers or the intention was that I was going to meet with them the next day. So I'm meeting with my agents and they're like, you know, letting go, you have the chapters, you have this, you have that, let's think of a title. So we're thinking of the title and I said to them, you know, like, I want a title like Welcome Home. Like when I was in the UK, I was thinking of how to teach people how to build a home and and I could see the title and I want to be able to see the title. And they both looked at each other and looked at me and they're like, that's the book you need to write. And so we shifted our whole focus and we went in and talked to publishers about Welcome Home. So and and it's had such a beautiful reception from everyone in the world, honestly. I'm just so grateful that I've been to this moment. I still get messages from people saying your book changed my life. Like, thank you. Like yesterday, I'm going to read this message to you. I read a message from someone who said, I came home to him every day for months and he welcomed me until the day he didn't. That day was heart shattering. I had suffered for years with not feeling like I should feel the pain because no one knew I had experienced it. This morning in the shower, I said to myself, the pain you felt was real. It was valid and warranted, but it no longer serves you in your home anymore. It's time for it to leave. Respectfully, please leave my home. And then she says, thank you, thank you for giving me permission to ask that pain to leave with love and gratitude. And she put her name like that. I got that yesterday. Like I just, I, it, I can't put a price on this kind of feeling that I get when I see somebody genuinely healing in this way. That just made me super emotional. That <laughs> right there is the real ROI. Right? Yes. That, that somebody yes is going to breathe a little bit different oxygen because you and I yes. were up today and totally went off script and just had this conversation. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That is the real ROI for 100%. sure. And I never thought about it that way, but that is it. You put it perfectly. <laughs> the home that you just described, like that's a beautiful and brilliant concept that's applicable for anybody to cultivate that just that like framework. Uh, of mm-hmm. home, like that's not welcome in my home anymore beautiful yes yeah just walk it to the door and shut the door in its face and say you're done there's another emotion there's another feeling there's another person walking through that door but not you anymore you've stayed here long enough and I always urge people to 
look at emotions and thoughts and people that we welcome into our homes and ask ourselves, is this somebody who I want to be a permanent resident of this home or just you know, someone who's a visitor and I get to tell them when to leave? It's very powerful to be able to visualize walking someone out of your home, walking a thought out of your home, walking a belief out of your home, and and also walking one inside. And that's, it gives you power when you are the owner of that home, right? 100%. I don't see mm-hmm. one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. <laughs> and you get to choose who yes. you're available for to have in your home and who you're mm-hmm. not available for. Now, what most of us do is in our own home, in our own lives, we only give ourselves one room one little tiny space and we give everybody else permission to just walk all over the place that's what most of us do because we don't think that we deserve to be the leaders the choosers the you know the 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 number one priority in our lives we think that by allowing others to walk all over us or to make decisions for us or to diminish us then, you know, we're going to feel better because at least we're not upsetting this person or that person. But real power isn't in being on everybody's good side and allowing everybody to walk all over you. Real power is in saying, this is who I am. You like me? You like me. You don't? You don't. That's fine. I'm not going to change who I am. And I'm not going to change the course of my life towards one that's not my own path towards one that you want to see me on because then I'm living my life for you not for myself so visualize that who you are your being as your home and ask yourself what would the owner of this home do what would they do with whatever situation you're going through you'll know what the answer is so good so powerful and it's such a breakthrough took me (laughs) right right, to figure this out but once i did everything opened up the relationships my my soulmate my my person my career everything is in alignment because started to have standards for myself and i feel like everything that we spoke about today although different topics they're all correlated right with authenticity and boundaries and yes. love and congruency all of it it's all correlated yeah. it's like once you put the focus on yourself you need authenticity you need boundaries you need vulnerability you need all of those are integral elements to who you are to you living your life as you are, as a projection of who you are. And that's what allows you to shine your light into the world. Like the the journey towards yourself and towards understanding that your authenticity is so important and that having boundaries is so important and being vulnerable is so important. Taking risks is so important. That is how you turn that light on and it will shine through you to the world. But when you don't focus on yourself, where is that light? You don't even know who you are. You don't even know how to recognize that you have that light within you, right? And so what happens is you become a reflection of the world around you instead of you projecting yourself into the world around you, onto the world around you. This is where like the end of the movie would say to be continued. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um we would we'll definitely get you back for sequel or three all of them. oh yeah for sure yes i, I, I would like that yeah i think i know the answer but i'm not 100 percent sure our audience is really low and engaging i know they're gonna fall in love with you in two seconds what's the best <laughs> way for them to support you and what are you most excited about right now i imagine it's the book <laughs> honestly the best way for them to support me is just yeah, go find my work. Conversations on Letting Go is coming out June 6th. 
Um, Welcome Home is an excellent read as well. You can also listen to it on, you know, Audible and other audio apps. My first three books are books of poetry and prose and reflections. You probably most definitely actually will find a lot of healing in those. Just, you know, spread the word. If you see a video of mine that you like, share it with someone who you think will find it helpful. And again, the best way to support me is by supporting yourself and asking yourself, how can I be my most authentic self? because that's my mission. So by doing that for yourself, you're helping yourself and me make this world a more real and authentic place. How can someone come home, right? (laughs) Yeah, how can someone come home? Well, the first step is to figure out where you currently are and how far from home you are. And we all know that if you close your eyes and visualize a road and at the end of that road is you, just just you, who you know you are, living your life exactly the way you want to live it. You can imagine how far away that road is, or that home is, how long that road is, whether it's winding, whether it's a dark road or there's lights all over the place, you can tell. And when you figure that out, then you know what you need to do for yourself to get to that place. That's exactly where we drop the mic. Consciousness <laughs> and awareness, clarity. You yes. can't change it if you can't see it, right? And just mm-hmm. to be clear, like, you don't have to approve of it, but you have to accept it so you can take positive steps forward. Absolutely. And, and you know, I know that we're reaching the end of our time, but just one last thing. Please. Like, we often think that if if we see how difficult the road ahead is we think that's a bad sign but you don't have to label it as good or bad you just have to say this is what i have to get through this is the price i have to pay to live the life i want am i willing to pay that price yes i am and you better negotiate that price in advance absolutely let it be let it be you know what's what's your authentic life worth it's worth a lot so i've never heard i've interviewed a lot a lot of mutual friends a lot of the the biggest thought leaders in the planet actors out there i've never had such a dynamic profound (laughs) about authenticity Uh and and for some reason that maybe now because i realized like well, everyone's like, how did you do what you've done in such a short amount of time? And a big part of it is becoming authentic or coming home, if you will. And I just think this message is so important for everybody because all the world really wants it is for you to show up as yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Nejwa, well, hang up for one second. I want to connect with you after. I want okay. you to know you the definition of being in alignment, compassion, and unbelievable energy. I could personally guarantee that your best is yet to come. Keep on spreading your wings and leaving your mark on this world. So much love and respect for you. Thank you so much for stopping by and dropping these priceless, juicy, authentic nuggets today. Thank you for having me. That was unbelievable. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, hi, is a kite. Aw, that's great. I love that feeling. <laughs> and, and also, like, I had to do a lot of preparation. I'm really excited for these. This was totally, like, off script and, and kind of like your book right? Like you were answering questions. You didn't know exactly what you wanted to say and I can't wait to read it. But those are the the most impactful and powerful conversations in my opinion. I agree with you. I, people always say, you know, do you want me to send you a list of questions ahead of time? I'm like, no, let's have a conversation. I don't want it to feel like we only have four minutes to answer every question. Like just let the conversation flow. It's the nature of life. And, you know, you will, you will say what you need to say and you will hear what you need to hear. So I, yeah, I'm happy we, we did it this way. And also one thing that I can't stand right now for being honest between me and you is getting asked the same exact question every time. I know. Yes, every interview I get asked, tell us about your journey coming home uh, from Lebanon to Canada, like right. almost every interview. And I'm like, people who listen to every interview of mine are probably sick and tired of hearing the exact same thing. Couldn't agree more. So I really like it when somebody's done their research and they ask me the bigger and very much more important questions. So 
Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this and I did not feel like it was an entire hour, to be honest. It just flew by. Home. It was like 20 minutes. Let's stay connected. Yes. Are you coming? Yeah, um, reach out to me on social media. I actually don't think we're connected, but just reach out to me and let's we'll connect stay. there for sure. Is it you okay. on Instagram or you have like a team? I manage my social media. Okay, so let's definitely support each other there. Okay. And then are you coming out to New York anytime soon? Uh not that I know of, but if I am, I'll let you know. Can we exchange numbers? Of course, yeah. I'll, I'll um, give you mine. You can shoot me a text and I'll text you back. All right. What's your number? 